And let's see, we have news courtesy of the New York Times. Phoebe Philo, former designer at Celine and Chloe is back. Uh, big news across, obviously, the majority of the interwebs or the interwebs that I'm part of and people that I kind of follow. Um, and um, maybe nervous um, energy being dis... Nervous energy being distributed. I don't know, whatever. This new sense shockwaves around the scene. Um, so much so that I saw some Instagram stories courtesy of Brian Boy or flipping Jonathan Anderson being a little bit tetchy on his Instagram stories, calling out certain journalists who were basically saying in an article praising Phoebe Philo that Jonathan Anderson isn't selling as well as he as well as he hoped he has whether it's with Louis of his own namesake brand but regardless her coming back Phoebe Philo is definitely going to send shockwaves to the industry and definitely put a pe couple of people on notice um, more so brands like you know Perenza Schurler Perenza Schurler The Row um, obviously maybe Bottega Veneta brands that I felt like kind of capitalised on her hiatus which is only again reading the article it's only been three and a half years you know it feels like much longer that she's kind of been out of fashion and decided to kind of pursue other things things you know be a stay-at-home mom and just kind of tapped out of the you know crazy fashion calendar cycle whatever it may be but it's only three and a half years and i've said the other day on twitter i think some would argue which i would argue for sure that there's some kind of correlation between zara going downhill nowadays right no one really talks about zara there's a, there a point where zara was like in everyone's conversation because of how quickly and kind of expertly they were able to copy um loads of key runway pieces and kind of disseminate them around all their stores for a fraction of the cost with you know far less um expensive materials and whatnot and of course they're definitely going to end up in some random landfill somewhere and cover the nose of some turtle somewhere but no one cares because they want to get their fits off but in general, it seems to be that some sort of correlation between Phoebe Fowler stepping away from fashion three and a half years ago and Zara slowly but surely dying a slow death. Now, some of it might be in part with all these Instagram brands pumping up and, you know, these little startups and one 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 woman brand things that are happening that are kind of filling that void. But in terms of filling that kind of yummy mummy professional kind of um, woman market that, you know, I wouldn't say girl mom or girl boss, whatever it is, um, clientele that Phoebe Fowler located to, it feels like they've somehow been um, split across different brands or moved to different things. Maybe they're tapping into Victoria Becker. Maybe again, perhaps a Schurler thing. Maybe it's a Hermes thing. Maybe it's a whatever it may be, but they've gone certain places. Now, the wonder is, will they come back again? that's the thinking will they come back um do they care had they moved on i'm not too sure but i definitely think um phoebe Fowler has that kind of uh loyalty amongst her customers that some designers just don't have in the same way that maybe mark jacobs has where he comes back and everyone's sort of like you know uh fanning themselves off at the amount of heat is about to drop and i think phoebe Fowler has the same sort of power especially with this sort of mystique around her how she's press shy um you know has very um differenting views when it comes to how the fashion calendar and the demands put on designers like she's kind of cultivated this air of mystique and kind of uh principles behind the things that she does or people kind of want to rally behind her so i'm sure people are going to be eager to drop some of their hard-earned cash on some of her designs if she eventually does make a comeback so it's courtesy of new york times it says listen do you hear that um courtesy of vanessa freeman it says listen do you hear that it's the intake of breath afterwards so after thousands of women uh, fashion prayers have finally been answered phoebe philo the patron say of dressing for the female gaze a designer whose work convinced joan didion to pose for an ad and turned her customers into groupies is returning to business on her own terms three and a half years after leaving her most um her last post as artistic director of celine miss philo 48 is finally putting her name where her artistic her aesthetic is and introducing yes phoebe philo an independent clothing and accessories line though it will be partly backed by LVMH why would they say it's independent if it's backed by LVMH is that just a semantics that doesn't make any sense to me you can't be independent and be backed by LVMH this is the same argument people were having with like Chance the Rapper right when he was like no I'm independent no you can't be independent if you've got an, an Apple deal it doesn't make any sense right like that's the complete opposite of what independent is but anyway it continues Miss Fowler's former employer the luxury behemoth will have only a minority stake allowing Miss Philo to retain control and to govern the experiment as she sees fit according to a news release. For, of course, she's it seems like she's quite demanding and has she's very um finicky and picky with the things that she does and doesn't do. And if they're able to kind of lure her out of her, you know, 
kind of somewhat um, self-imposed sabbatical, then for sure they're going to bend over backwards to make sure that she's happy. They're going to, whatever they can put into place, whether it's having a studio in London or whatever it may be, or giving her days off to look after her, after her kids, anything that she wants, they'll definitely make sure they cater to it. So if that means even taking a minority stake just to make sure that she puts out clothes, because you'd much rather have 1%, 5%, under fifty percent of whatever Phoebe Fowler makes for ever many for many years, because you know it's going to be a success, as opposed to not having that possibility, right? As opposed to putting in money in other people who don't sell because that's a weird thing about Phoebe Fowler, um, and the designs that she's done, especially with Celine and more so even with Chloe, she sells in it. Like it's one of those weird designers that somehow has because there's not a lot of them that exist, especially when you watch stuff like Show Studio, right? A lot of those people have a you know. The, the, the designers they all seem to love on there the editors are the ones that don't sell right are the ones that normal everyday people on the street don't give a shit about um but then sometimes you have those weird people that exist like you know like a phoebe Fowler, like a raf like a damn nut who seem to have the ear and the attention of the fashion is my passion crew and also the general punters who just want to look amazing at work want to look amazing every day in their everyday life and whatnot right um and for sure lvmh have seen that and they said look we're going to make every kind of concession necessary to make you comfortable and make sure that you're happy in your position and then we're just going to let you run free and do your thing because you know again She's a professional to work in the industry, you know, for you know, more than two decades. She's got, she knows what to do. And if anything, the game, the scene, the industry needs her. Right? It, her voice is needed now more than ever, it feels like. So for sure, this is a kind of perfect marriage in that respect. It continues. Being in my studio and making once again has been both exciting and incredibly fulfilling, says Miss Philo in an announcement. I'm very much looking forward to being back in touch with my audience and people everywhere. Oof, I love that statement. I'm very much looking forward to being back together with my audience and people everywhere so all those people that run up to the row and all that and again excited that their sales are going up because people were because phoebe fellow wasn't around anymore she's basically saying i hope you enjoyed your little time in the sun now the big lady's back the big big boss bitch the bbb is back she's going to call the shots and you know suddenly all your sales will dry up it says here the reticence is not surprising from the designer who often appeared at the end of her run with her head half hidden in a polo neck she rarely gave interviews and since her departure has turned to somewhat of a greater garb of the industry as she in media social media and paparazzi are tracking photo ops it's true there was meant to be a really big fashion forces panel thing that she was meant to do i, th I think it might have been before lockdown or maybe before that even i don't know if that even happened I remember seeing that being advertised and suddenly they stopped advertising it so maybe they pulled the rug um, on that one or pulled the plug on that I don't really know but it'll be interesting to see what she does going forward because again the landscape of fashion has changed too right people at the time wanted Phoebe Fire to talk and wanted more you know information and touch and insight from her and what she does and she was quite press shy at that time but nowadays it feels like everybody and their mum wants to get in front of a camera on the IG live stream and tell people about the inspiration of the design people want they want to feel connected somewhat to the stuff that they're buying. Their demands on people and designers are a lot more strenuous than they were prior than she left, than before she left, even though it was crazy then. It was, you know, fashion has gone, moved on so much since, uh, well, the industry has kind of got more crazy since she's kind of left. So I, I'm interested to see how she approaches the media going forward. I continue to get more information about what exactly Phoebe Philo, the brand, will be promised in January. Will it be only women's wear, women's wear, men's, unisex? In the meantime, however, a few clues were buried out. Hopefully, it's men's as well. Hopefully, oh, definitely, hopefully. It doesn't really matter if it's not men's because there's going to be dudes that are going to buy it anyway because usually the fits and the shapes of Phoebe Philo's work are quite forgiving to guys, especially if you're on the slimmer side. You can get away with wearing a shirt, a blouse, a pair of trousers, a coat and stuff very, very well. But... It would be nice if she just decided, you know what, I'm going to bless you guys and just give you something that you want to wear too. But again, I think the singularity of her vision only given to the kind of women's side of things is probably where her special power or superpower is. So it might be beneficial just to kind of double down on what you do best instead of kind of trying to spread yourself thin. It says, for example, the line will be exceptional quality, which is generally fashion speak for the high luxury end of pricing and material spectrum. It will likely be based in London, Miss Fyler's home and where her Celine studio was located, despite the brand's headquarters being in
in Paris. Oh, so I'm interested to see who the team is going to be as well. Is she going to jack people from other brands? Is there going to be people that she worked with prior who have been out of the business? I wonder. It's not a big leap to guess that it may it may have created on the design. Sorry, it's not a big leap to guess that it may be created on the designer's own schedule, given the emphasis on self determination and given Fala's history of shafting um, against the demands of the fashion system during her ten years at Celine and her five year stint at Chloe, where she became the first designer at the major brand to take a maternity leave which is insane to think in it really and then on the other side of things you got her being very picky and selective with how she works and on the other side of things you got you know Carl Lagerfeld before he passed so, you know R.I.P. to the great one he didn't turn down the opportunity to do more work right look at people like a Virgil Abloh who's basically taking that mantle like he does not collaboration he doesn't want to do um so it's interesting to see if that will have because again people are in fashion are proper copycats and love to just do whatever someone else is doing so it'd be interesting to see if other designers when she gives her first major interview talking about the pressures of the industry and how it led her to be stressed and all this sort of stuff it'd be interesting to see if other designers also piggyback off the back of it and try to get some sort of arrangement made where they can take maternity leave or take breaks or you know have time to recharge because now with two collections a year plus resort and you know all the other activations that need to be done and appearances and whatnot it's just it just seems exhausting to keep up with especially with the demands of the consumer the never-ending change in trends and whatnot it just feels maddening and the unforgiving relenting pressure that the press give you right one minute you're the angel and you're the one and next minute you're a joke you don't know what you're doing so it's crazy it continues perhaps she will bypass a seasonal show will entirety i'm um, sorry the entire perhaps she will bypass the seasonal show will entirely for a new version of slow fashion one that is altogether more sustainable perhaps she will be the designer who is really who's really able to take a stand against the dominant culture of disposability and the ravenous more of the content monster created by tiktok and instagram An announcement oh yeah interested in it do you think phoebe Fowler is going to be on tiktok hopefully she's not please for the love of god leave that alone in the answer of bernard arnaud the chairman of lvmh called the new line and entrepreneurial adventure what does that even mean this i love the ceo speaking it entrepreneurial adventure what independent but owned by ovmh how does that make sense like anyway we continue despite the fact that phoebe files brand is not officially part of the luxury group that lvmh is once again linked with phoebe Fowler, given her most wanted status as a coup for the conglomerate certainly it will make it will be a mistake to assume that Fifth Fala return to fashion will look anything like her past after all her Chloe, which is synonymous with a certain cool girl attitude, sending a generation of young women into the baby doll dresses and cloth hopper wooden wedges. Look nothing like her Celine, which was imbued with a kind of radical maturity, elevating the maid leotard and the oversized navy cashmere sweater to desirability and kicking start or well, kickstarting the trend of luxury Birkenstocks. Besides Daniel Lee, who worked closely with Miss Philo at Ready to Wear Director and Celine is currently doing a similar but different version of the brand of his role at a creative director Bottega Vanessa. Yeah, very true. And he's decided to take this interesting approach with Bottega Vanessa since in it. It feels like, you know, there's been what did Brand Boy say? Like he's pandering to black people, it feels like, right? There's a show that's meant to be happening in Detroit, which doesn't really make much sense. It's cool for Detroit. It's a cool look. I'm sure he's gonna be utilizing loads of local creatives and whatnot and spearheading loads of interesting initiatives that's definitely gonna help people on the ground. So as cynical and as opportunistic as it may be, it's definitely gonna help people. So I'm happy with that kind of exchange. But that's a really weird one. Will Phoebe Father come back and try and you know be the answer to all women all over the world or try to talk to a specific person or just reflect or to how would the coaches reflect her journey like you think of chloe that was when she was a bit younger and maybe kind of di directly kind of, or maybe a bit younger or longing for the years when she was younger and be able to kind of imbue some of her desires and wants into those clothes when it moved into celine it was her kind of becoming a mother and kind of again trying to design clothes that would fit a professional woman's lifestyle without looking too frumpy and without looking too dull and you know unappealing whatever it may be in whatever way whether it's a male or female gaze and then you'd imagine now being you know uh, a legit mom maybe she's not trying to have more kids I don't think who knows maybe the attitude and the ideas going into the clothes now with this new brand is completely different maybe it is something more for you know middle-aged women who want to look a bit cute on a weekend who want to have you know clothing that's functional things that you can go hiking with and you could go out with afterwards thing that you know um doesn't necessarily react too badly to mistakes and mishaps when you're out gardening i don't know whatever i'm sure it will be self 
uh, I'm sure it'll be self-referential in that way. It'll reflect definitely where she's at as a person, as opposed to kind of being a trend thing. Because it feels like some of the other people that have come forth so far have been trying to fill a void, right? They've been trying to maybe capture that market, that audience. Whereas I feel like with Phoebe Fowler, she's just tried to make her own. That's probably why someone like a Heidi Semenoid wins because it feels like he's just designing his own wardrobe, right? He's kind of um, insular in that way. Same with the Rick Owens, right? He's sort of trying to basically design stuff that fits within his own universe. And if you if you want to be a part of it, you want to be a part of it. If you don't, you don't. But it doesn't necessarily change with the whims of this industry and the trends too tough. It's just kind of them moving to the beat with their own drum. So I think my assumption is that it's going to be more self-reflective in that way it'll just be essentially you know clothes that are inspired or clothes that are there, clothes that would reflect well on somebody that is maybe a bit more accomplished maybe a bit more steady a bit more comfortable in who they are and got a family all that sort of stuff it will kind of fit in well in that respect going forward or maybe just be carefree i don't know who knows if miss fellow is back it's presumably because she is something entirely new to say for the new world which means that not only the thing which means that the only thing for certain is that the rumor mill, which has put the name of Phoebe Fire on the running for pretty much every creative director job since um, the start of 2018, including Burberry, Chanel, Ferragamo, Laura Piana, will finally be silenced. And that not just the fashion world, but those yearning for an image of themselves they can't quite yet define will be watching. Yeah, there were a lot of rumors about her going to different houses. There was a rumor, I think, the Givenchy one before Matthew Williams was confirmed there. I don't necessarily think they're not true. I definitely think conversations were had behind the scenes and maybe she. She just decided to do something else and and if I, I would imagine if it was me if i went to come back after such a kind of quote it's not long but in fashion years it probably is long three and a half year hiatus i'd want to try to just do something under my own name especially given the you know amount of esteem that she's kind of acquired over this time and if it fails fair enough i failed on my own dime as opposed to coming back trying to fail reinventing a house or you know adding a new kind of perspective on a particular brand it always feels like that defeat is a lot more harder to take than failing on your own namesake because there's you know things that go around it in terms of the industry and business wise that can affect it look at someone like Hyde Aikerman for instance when you fail with your own namesake there is a possibility to kind of bounce back from that a lot better and maybe it doesn't has such a psychological blow as it does going into a house with heritage and customers already disappointing them disappointing the shareholders it feels like it takes a lot to kind of recover from and that kind of debilitating defeat so for sure this is the best option available for her to succeed and to do something great so i'm definitely looking forward to that when that ends up happening